Hi everybody, my name is Max Maker and what you're looking at right now is my Ultimaker. It's the very first 3D printer I had and it worked great. It made some really good prints, at least for the time, but it was made out of wood. It came as a kit, I had to assemble it, it was a lot of fun, but the wood changes a little bit with the seasons, so I keep have to uh, adjusting it. And it made some good parts nonetheless, but it also made some pretty bad parts because it doesn't have a heated bed and there's a lot of warping. So I bought a new printer, the Prusa i3 Mark III S, which is like the king of 3D printers right now. It's made in the Czech Republic and this is the very first print I did with it and it came out absolutely perfectly. There's no more warping, uh, never mind that black line, it's just some Sharpie I put on there for a test. And yeah, the quality is amazing and up next I want to build a nice enclosure for it. It will keep the noise in and the heat and it will keep the dust and the humidity out. So that's the goal and I'm going to make everything out of plywood and of course have a little door to access everything. And Prusa actually developed a lack table system where you buy some IKEA lack tables and then print some parts and build that into an enclosure, which I think is a really cool idea, but uh, it's not for me. I want it to be more customized and you know, I'm not a student anymore. I don't want any more IKEA in my life ever again. So let's build something out of plywood and I'm using this 20 millimeter Baltic birch plywood that I had left over from my nightstands uh, video. Link up there if you want to follow that. And that's just great material to work with. It's perfectly straight and flat. And I'm just making a simple box and for the door I looked around the hardware store and I found this. It's a standard triple glazed German window and it has all the functionality I need and I don't need to buy any perspex or so and it only cost me 50 euros because it was an exhibition piece. Hey! So here's the deal, I need to align this properly here and also up here and to make it a little bit easier for myself I'm going to use some biscuits. Always mark where you want the biscuits to be because it's easy to drill them into the wrong side of the piece of wood. So the first time I made some boxes like these I just used screws from the outside, then I tried out some dowels with a dowel jig which also worked, then I got this biscuit joiner and next up I definitely want to get a, a Domino XL from Festo. But if you don't have any of that stuff you can just use screws from the outside and that will be perfectly fine. But you need to cover the screw heads obviously before painting. That was rather stressful, but it worked out okay, I think. And this is not fully in here yet, this is just in there to make everything square. Uh, I will remove this, then I can paint everything and then put the window in. So now we can add the back and for that I'm using some thinner material and I'm cutting this roughly to size and then I'm gluing the whole cabinet on top of that and I can trim the edges later with a flush trim bit and a router. Time for paint and I'm using this old paint that I had left around for five years. The whole enclosure will be quite heavy when it's done, especially with the printer inside, so I'm adding some wheels. And I've got plenty of these leftover wheels because at one order I ordered far too many for a customer. Um, so now I'm using them. They're pre-assembled with this bolt, which sometimes works out fine, but in this case they just stick out and through the plywood, uh, which is okay. The cabinet is much bigger anyway, because I had to work with the width of the window and the printer is much smaller. But ultimately the size uh, turned out to be perfect. The window was also a perfect fit and for now I kept everything together with some clamps and one of the clamps I turned around so it's spreading apart instead of uh, pulling stuff together. Uh, that's really cool with these clamps that you can use them that way. That's something that I wouldn't have had with a Perspex window or a polycarbonate window. And of course it wouldn't be airtight either, so that's the nice thing of this window. It's just perfect, you know, it's 50 euros, it saves me a ton of time and the finish is much nicer, so I can totally recommend that. Windows in, time to seal it up to make it properly airproof. And first a quick clean with isopropyl alcohol and then I'm adding some silicone to the seams. 
this should do very nicely. I can comfortably reach inside and I can see the printer from the outside and it should be airtight. I tried to make life easy in the workshop so I got this manual forklift and it's amazing for lifting heavy stuff. It was the corona time so I went to my neighbor and I traded some toilet paper for the slab of concrete and that will act as the base of the printer itself. So I want this to be really heavy so it doesn't vibrate as much. This is just like we build houses in Germany, we have some concrete suspended on foam so that way the concrete that you're walking on is suspended from the real concrete that holds up the house so your neighbor doesn't hear your footsteps. It was just 12 degrees in the workshop so to dry it a little bit quicker I used this heater that was dangling above the concrete. Heavy. So you can't have any vibrations come through because it's on that floating layer of foam, like in a house. Prusa recommends that this power supply doesn't get as hot as the enclosure, so I'm placing it outside and I made this metal bracket to hold it on there. That meant that the original cables weren't long enough, so I had to extend them. And for that I used these shrink tubes that already have some solder inside. So you heat them up and they solder and they isolate the wire in one go. So it saves a lot of time and I don't have to get my soldering iron down in the workshop. There's plenty of space above the 3D printer to store any of the filament screws. So I could remove the stock spool holder that came with the printer and I printed these brackets instead to hold some 2020 extrusions. So I can screw them in above the 3D printer and then I can put all those spools up there. I changed this a little bit later on, but for now it's time to move the whole cabinet into my flat where it will be much more accessible. As you can hear, you can hear almost nothing with this new enclosure. So I immediately started printing a lot of parts and it turned out uh, that fiddling these spools on top of the extrusions isn't that easy so I changed it a little bit. So now I can just place the spools up there and then uh, I have a dedicated spool holder for the spool that I'm printing with. I also added this little caddy to keep all of the tools that I need uh, and that's just one of the great things that you can use a 3D printer to, to make a lot of helping hands for the workshop. So here I've got all of the screwdrivers that I need to maintain it, a sharpie, some isopropyl alcohol pads, cable ties and some pliers to deal with jams. And also added this thermometer to check on the temperature. So usually I keep the window a little bit open when I print PLA, especially if I have a low flow rate, because with low flow rate the filament spends a lot of time up here and this extruder can get quite warm and if it reaches a certain temperature this will get soft at about this height where the extruder gears are and then it clocks up. So uh, for small flow rates, like small layer heights, I keep the door open um, and for other stuff I can close the door and then it reaches about 45 degrees. And uh, the other cool feature about this is not just keeping the temperature in, it also keeps the draft out and the moisture out. So whenever this heats up, it's like an oven that keeps the PETG uh, quite dry. So I heard that's important. I haven't uh, had so much experience yet with the PETG, but this works out really well and I'm glad I made this because, uh, yeah, it's very convenient. This is a little bit open and this is fully open. It is in our guest room now and if we have guests around, if they are engineers, they can look inside the window and if not, I can just turn around and it looks like any odd piece of furniture. So thanks for watching guys, I hope this inspired you to make something yourself today. My name is Max Maker and I make all kinds of stuff. So please subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, you know the deal. Thanks for watching everybody!